So the last couple of years, teaching and learning from students has really gone, undergone a bit of a revolution, I think. When I first started lecturing, I was the centre of attention. So the students would look at me and I would be giving them all the information they needed. So I would be writing things up on the board or, or just talking to them and they would be busy writing it down. But now they can get the same knowledge from, from Google in an instant. Why would they want to come to my lectures if that's all I do? So I've tried to turn it around, trying to centre it back onto the students so it's more about them learning rather than just me as a spokesman giving out the information. So I use worksheets in my lectures and the worksheets lead them through the, the calculations, lead them through the ideas, hopefully a little bit of discussion between people around them in the lecture theatre so that we can get in the lecture theatre them to practice and, and solve things straight away, which is the, really the, the opportunity that face-to-face -face time has that online experiences don't have. So I commonly use a demonstration in my lectures for a variety of different reasons. Sometimes it's just for entertainment. Sometimes I know the lecture, the content in the lecture is quite dry and it's just helpful after 20 minutes or half an hour just to, to break off from all that and to focus on something more colourful or more exciting, perhaps an explosion or something that changes colour. Um, just something for the students to, 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 to refocus their minds. I wanted them to practice their calculations but I know that they're going to get exhausted if I do that for 50 minutes. So after about 20 minutes, we broke away from the calculations and then we refocused on a, on a demonstration. And the demonstration was about, was about indicators. And I know that's one of the concepts that students have a lot of trouble with. They think it's kind of magic. So what form is present in acidic conditions? And I accompanied the, the demonstration with a worksheet again. I tried to bring out some of their misconceptions about what's going on. And I try to get them to put down a prediction. I tell them it's not for marks. And then we watch the demonstration. So what colour do we think it's going to go? Red. OK, everybody happy why it's red? So what form is most, is, is most abundant? So I think having a demonstration or having an activity is one way of just engaging them in the lecture and getting them to think about the content rather than just being sponges of everything that I might throw at them. First time I started putting in activities during my lectures, I was really worried worried that I was going to have to, to miss out content or have to rush over things, um, or that the students would laugh if it went wrong. What I've really learned is the students are really patient with you and really in, enjoy it if you take a few risks and you want to do something a little bit different to their last lecture. So even when things go wrong, and something went wrong this morning, but we all had a bit of a laugh about it, and, and that actually helps the, the atmosphere of the class. I was adding sodium hydroxide. <laughs> Sorry? I would encourage new lecturers just to just, just try something a little bit different in the lectures. Don't just give a 50-minute PowerPoint presentation. Take out a few slides and turn them into an activity. You still get through the content, but you'll just engage the students that much more. Just go for it.